Hi, Tracy from Salem here. It's been a long time since I did a video. I um, The summer was a bit overwhelming, <laughs> lots of fun things, but a lot. And then I work at a university, so September is always completely crazy. So I'm back and hope, hope to be able to post more regularly. Um, but a little catch up maybe from the last time I posted a video. Um, I've been working on a lot of things. So one thing I'm working on is a business, which is the business is set up, but I don't have my website yet. And I, I don't have tax, uh, you know, whatever the, the, the ability to, to, um, charge people tax and stuff. So I can't sell anything yet, but, um, I'm hoping that my first little project for sale will be these, um, dear to my heart, um, little spell and talisman pouches what is which is what i call them i got a i got a good little stock going on here now um and so these are just very small little um, pouches uh, for crystals for spells for writing down affirmations and just being able to carry them around and have uh something um lovely and inspiring and a way it's they're like a mojo bag in some sense but i don't use that word um but uh that's a word that some people know so i'm, I'm noticing on my camera the colors are really not quite true this is actually a very beautiful teal a really bright and gorgeous kind of jewel tone teal so i see that the colors aren't exactly true on this new camera that I got. <laughs> um, just a little, trying to upgrade the act a little bit. Um, and so each of them is entirely 100% hand sewn. Um, some of them have, um, this one has like a little magnet that keeps it closed. This, some of them have little beads that keep them closed. This one is a um, snap. I particularly love this uh, material, which is a, um, pattern from, um, Aboriginal Australian artists, um, or just uh, Aboriginal artists that on the current content currently, currently known as Australia. Um, I have a lot of theirs and it's these beautiful batiks. I mean, kind of the problem was that I was just creating a lot of stuff and uh, I just got to the point where I was like, well, I, I don't have any more room in my house anymore. Isn't that why so many people start selling their things? <laughs> because they just can't stop making. And um, I was just having a blast. Um, I had taken a class with Julie Booth, who had taught her version of these little pouches, uh, which is, um, they look different than than mine. Um, but the idea is the same. Um, so I just want to give her full credit. So this is just a gorgeous, bright lime green. It's too bad the colors are not coming out as well as they could um, with this lovely sea glass bead. Um, but that's when I started doing them last year and I just fell in love. This has an old button as a closure. And I just fell in love with making them and then suddenly I was like, well, <laughs> What are you going to do with all these, Blanchard? I don't know. So I'm hoping to get my site set up soon and be able to start selling them soon. I might start with having them in local stores. I live in Salem, uh, otherwise known as the Witch City. So there are certainly plenty of um, local uh, places, local shops where these might go over well. I do like this one particularly, this um, gimp, just beautiful. And um, maybe I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because since the lighting is less than fantastic. Although I just found out that my new camera doesn't zoom when recording. Well, what is the point of that? Luckily, I just bought it on Amazon for cheaps. 
And that's what I got, right, for Chiefs. Uh, and this is the last one. And then recently I started making um, these little mini um, altar cloths uh, or a, maybe it's a candle holder or, you know, I don't, I don't know, whatever, whatever you need for it to be. A little travel altar cloth is probably how I would use it. I can put a little tiny um, uh, statue. If you have a little statue, you could put a little tiny, um, what do you call those little candles, you know, tea, tea light candles. Um, you can see outside of the labyrinth is essentially what they call encrusted embroidery. And I'm working on another one. <laughs> this is this is a great project for my commute. Um, I commute an hour and a half both ways each day, which is a long time to be sitting in, especially in the morning, I'm really sitting in traffic, not so much at night. But um, so this is one I'm working on. Uh, here's the back, backing material, which is just a fabulous wool. Um, this is the back of this one. Uh, so this is a great new project, and I hope to have some of these as well. So these are the little projects I work on when I'm traveling um, or just between larger projects. Then this summer, I went to Madeline Island, um, which is an island in Lake Superior uh, in Wisconsin. And... Um, Wow, the lighting is, is really bad. I'm gonna close that other curtain. See if that helps. That's a little better. Not fantastically so. Okay, so beware of buying. <laughs> Ooh, we're professionals here. We're professionals here. That's right. So beware of buying things on the internet, on Amazon. That doesn't help either. So this is a vibrant, bright lime green, which you are not seeing. Anyway, I went to Madeline Island School of the Arts in Wisconsin this summer for a week-long retreat with Sue Spargo. Um, called Master in Stitchology, or maybe it's just Stitchology. I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, um, it was awesome. It was so amazing. Now, Sue Spargo, if you know Sue Spargo at all, uh, is um, not my style, for sure. Um, and she is a master stitcher. And it's pretty hard in America to find classes on embroidery. And um, to, especially to go beyond just like the running stitch or the blanket stitch um, to re if you want to really take your embroidery up a notch. Um, it's hard to find master stitchers who will help you. And I mentioned Julie Booth earlier. I've taken a couple of classes with her and she really um, launched me and got me started and got me passionate about embroidery. So. I, I highly recommend uh, Julie Booth, B-O-O-T-H. Um, and then I just wanted to, you know, and she has her particular style, so I wanted to learn from somebody else, uh, you know, with a different style. Um, and Sue Spargo has a book, which I've shown in these videos before, of about 70 stitches. And um, so that's kind of really broadening the horizons and taking things up a notch. And so this was, uh, her class, Master Stitchology, was a deep dive into, uh, so you know all the stitches, you have to know all the stitches before you get there, and then you're going to take a deep dive into some of these stitches. And so each one of these blocks was a sampler in, in that vein. So this is the chain stitch sampler, um, and using the chain stitch in all different kinds of ways and... Uh, uh, wrapping it and yeah, this is wrapped also and um, using it in a variety. There's a variety of chain way to do construct the chain stitch. Um, 
and a variety of ways to decorate it. And so that's what this sampler is about. Uh, this sampler is the fly stitch, a deep dive into the fly stitch. Um, so I have to lift this because this stupid camera doesn't zoom in. Like, what is the point of zoom? There's a zoom on the side of the screen that I can see, but I cannot use. What is the point of a zoom function if you can't actually use it? I, I don't understand. Anyway, um, this is the fly stitch, uh, as you can see, um, in lots of different ways and then decorate it in lots of different ways. I do enjoy this sampler quite a bit. I like the way that came out. This is a deep dive into buttonhole stitch, trellis stitch, and cup stitch. Um, so again, so I should put something under here so it's easier to lift, shouldn't I? That seems sensible. But of course, I don't have anything to hand because I was not prepared for this not to work. Um, but here's a trellis stitch. I was very excited because I'd been practicing trellis stitch for months before this class. Could not do it without there being holes and gaps. And she showed me the tricks and the ways uh, to make that happen so that you have a nice tight stitch. And then these are cup stitches done in a variety of ways. Um, and uh, then um, what was the other one? Buttonhole, buttonhole and trellis uh, done in a variety of ways. and then decorated. So that was fun. This one took a super long time. I believe I stitched for 12 hours this day. <laughs> I mean, most of the days actually, I stitched for um, 11 or 12 hours. You know, we'd be in the classroom for eight hours and then and I'd get there earlier in the morning to start and then I'd go after dinner and continue and go to bed way too late. But you know, it's vacation, right? That's what it's all about. You have five days to get to soak it all in. Uh, this sampler is couching, which just means uh, tacking something down, essentially. Um, not, not by applique, but by uh, crossing. So um, you can see this. So this is like a bright, like reddish peach background, which it doesn't look like at all. But so this is couching over. This is couching. This is a different way to couch. So these are just all different ways uh, of couching. Um, and so she really, what was great was she really, really pushed us to think of these stitches as creatively as possible to try new things. Um, this was the final day, which this sampler was using her um, spoke easy tool and her loop easy tool, which I don't, again, don't have to hand. But um, this is a beautiful pink background, which you'd never know. <laughs> um, but essentially, the spoke easy helps you make uh, wrapped and woven circles. And the loop easy helps you make these um, helps you make leaves, essentially. That one might be my fave. And also on this one, I started to bring in um, things from that I had tried on other uh, samplers. Um, I also had a couple of uh, dorset buttons that I had around and so I used to decorate um, there's a GIMP. Gosh, I just love GIMP so much, but you can't, it seems like you can't really see it on the, yeah, this is, I guess the first and last time I use this camera. What a bummer. Okay. So then anyway, that was Sue Spargo. So once I finished, I came home and I finished up all my samplers because they weren't complete. We just didn't have time to do that much, even, even with stitching. 11 to 12 hours a day. Um, once I had finished all my samplers, then I really wanted to 
to just take what I had learned into my style. As I mentioned, Sue Spargo is not my style. Um, you know, master stitcher, just not my particular personal style. And so then I wanted to take it into my style. And so this is the next piece that I did. Um, again, that encrusted uh, embroidery. And so uh, there's no particular name for this piece, um, but it's clearly, well, maybe not clearly to you, but clearly to me, it's it's C themed, C inspired. Um, and I took uh, stitches that I'd been practicing all, I, I spent like two or three months practicing the stitches from the book. So I'd be ready for an advanced workshop. And so to just, and I was just doing them on my practice cloth, uh, which I've shown in previous videos. And now I was, I really wanted to take them into a piece. And so I've got some dorset buttons and I've got, um, I've got bullion knots and I've got chain stitches. Like that's a chain stitch right there. Uh, lots of beads, lots of French knots. Um, this was, a, I, I can't even remember what I was trying to do there. Uh, but I've got these drizzle stitches coming out. Um, and so just all over the piece. And then just tiny little, tiny little stars and whipped woven circles and trapunto um, and using lots of different kinds of threads. This is a, a what do you call it? Eyelash thread, this lovely kind of fuzzy thing. Um, and these are uh, some woven, I think they're called, what are they called? Tri, tri, uh, I forget what they're called, but they're woven essentially. Um, and th this one, I love this one that's done with uh, GIMP. Can you tell that GIMP is like my favorite thread? It's also GIMP. Um, and, you know, beads and um, trim. So um, right now I'm trying to decide what the back back round will be. I think I've got this blue linen. I think I'm going to sew it to the blue linen and obviously I'll, I'll edge it uh, and then mount it on a frame. So this was, uh, this felt like a kind of a full flowering of like when I really stepped from practicing, learning, um, all those things I'd been doing since well, maybe for about a year now, I've just been taking classes and practicing on my practice cloth, making my tiny little, um, uh, little secret spell and talisman pouches, uh, you know, and just little small little things, small little expressions of myself. Um, and this was sort of my big step out into uh, directions that I would like to head um, in terms of creating original pieces. Um, and I just, this just makes me enormously happy. I love, I love touching it. Okay, more, more gimp, drizzle stitch gimps. <laughs> um, yeah, I love touching it, which is, you know, probably I need to like leave it alone and not constantly be touching it because it's fiber. Um, but it's hard not to. <laughs> Uh, and so the piece I'm working on now was taking, I just loved that idea so much. I loved the doing the encrusted embroidery so much because I can just do all so many different kinds of stitches, use so many different kinds of threads, um, you know, and I really worked with my color wheel. I took my color wheel to uh, Misa at Madeline Island with me and really used it on those uh, samplers, but you can't tell because the light is so bad. Um, but uh, then also really used it in that piece to get all different kinds of threads. Um, you'll see I even put in some reds. Um, I put in a couple of reds because I had used this uh, kind of a brown wool 
as a base piece. Uh, now it ended up getting, I didn't know I was gonna do this whole encrusted thing. I had no idea that's what was gonna happen. And so most of it got covered, but it did inspire me to start to pull in some reds. Um, and you can see in this piece, some reds. And so then I did some red um, chain uh, loops up here um, and, and some orange. I got some orange in here uh, because blue and orange are and are across from our complementary colors. Uh, so I was really pushing myself to see like, how can I use a lot of different colors and have them play nice on the piece and um, be in conversation with each other. So anyway, I love that process so much that I decided my next piece was going to be something similar. Um, I have seen a lot of people doing a lot of like moss pieces on Instagram and just thought that was fantastic and thought, well, why don't I, what if I did something that combined moss and this kind of encrusted oceanic thing that I just did, you know, take that to the next step. And so I thought, well, the, the, a globe is the perfect way because you've got land and you've got sea, right? Lovely. And in my personal spiritual um, practice, which is Celtically inspired, land, sea, and sky are a very big thing, right? They are the, the meeting of the three worlds, you could say, or th the three elements that make up the world, you could say. Um, they are also uh, those places where land and sea or land and sky or land, sea, and sky meet together are a very liminal space. That's how I experience them as a very liminal space where the veil is thin, if you will, between the worlds. Like, have you ever stood at the ocean? I'm, I'm quite certain I'm not the only person that experiences this, right? If you are standing uh, at the ocean or if you're standing particularly like on a bluff over the ocean, right? So your feet are rooted in the ground. The sky is all around you and the sea is before you. It, it's a very uh, liminal kind of feeling, right? You, you, f you can feel the, the thinness of the veil between this world and all the things that remain unseen to the human eye. Anyway, that's what I decided would be my next piece. I wanted to do like a globe and do like the moss covered land that kind of encrusted embroidery C, and then maybe put some um, constellations. So have a background that resembled kind of the sky or evoked the feeling of the sky, and maybe put some stars in it. I went, at first it was just stars, and then I kind of went to constellations. Anyway, I'm not sure if this is going to fit under, I think, I think not. Let me take it out of the <coughs> Pardon me, out of the frame. High allergy season here in Massachusetts. I'm always coughing and sniffling, and I don't. And I'm not sick. I'm not. I've tested repeatedly for COVID, and I don't even have a cold. Um, so yeah, so this is this piece that I'm working on now. Um, just undoing. Uh, and so, um, just to get a little bit closer here, here's what's going to be the sky. And I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put some constellations. I'm still working on that. Like what should be in the Northern hemisphere? What should be in the Southern hemisphere? Do I pick one day of the year? I, I don't know. I haven't worked all that out yet. Or am I just going to put stars? Uh, it may come down to that <laughs> by the time I'm finished with this. So I've been working on this for a little bit and I'm close to getting the land masses covered. Um, I tried to do like basically seed stitching with a lot of different um, earth toned threads for the places. Uh, you know, if you look at a map that um, shows you like the where the green spaces are and where the brown spaces are and whatever, right? Deserts and, and whatever. So <clears throat> I essentially did that. Um, took, used a map that showed that 
and so did like seed stitching in lots of different colored threads for the more deserty areas. I think there's a little too much desert here in the United States, but that but maybe I'm wrong. I'm not exactly sure. And then more moss for the greener parts. Um, and it's it's tons and tons of French knots. And uh, there's some chain, little chain loops. Um, and there's a couple of bullion. Here's a, here's a piece of ribbon that I basically ruched and sewed down. Um, but it's mostly French knots, lots and lots of different color threads. I think Africa came up pretty darn well. I don't, yeah. Italy may be a strangely, I think Italy came out strangely desertified, even though if you look at a map, it's pretty brown. Um, Italy and Spain seem to be pretty brown, uh, but that just seems a slightly, slightly strange to me. That may have to get fixed. I'm not sure how. Um, I will say that something about the encrusted embroidery or this kind of very, very tight French knot um, kind of thing is, or, or very tight seed stitches. Uh, there's a lot of threads in here um, making up the boot. And that makes it really hard to undo. Really hard to undo. Um, so anyway, um, I'm thinking about doing white on the, um, North Pole, maybe on Greenland. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I mean, the poor ice caps are melting, but I don't think there's green things growing there yet. <laughs> uh, and I doubt we'll be around to see green things growing. But to just hop off that sad tale, uh, I, th I think that's enough for me today, just as a catching up on um, what I've got going, what's on the hoop. And um, next time, hopefully I'll just do some stitching, doing some of that encrusted uh, embroidery on the ocean. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.